Well, as we said, a busy week ahead as Parliament returns for the year and for a preview of what we should expect next week. I'm joined now by Nationals MP Keith Pitt. Keith, good to have you with us. Now, I've got lots to ask you about. Firstly, how will Albo go with so many independents in both houses of the Parliament and in particular the dysfunction of that Senate? I don't think it's been more dysfunctional in the last six elections. How is he going to go trying to get through some of those bills? Oh, don't forget, he's got the Labor Reserve grade in the Greens. Uh, so he's got one with Mr Band in the House and he's got a, <laughs> most of a team in the Senate. Uh, they'll do a deal like they always do, just like they do in an election. That's how he'll pass things. But they'll be detrimental for our country if the Greens are the ones that are leading the charge. What about question time? Because he has avoided over the last eight weeks facing serious questions about policy, about domestic issues, because he's been primarily overseas... But you can't get away in question time. It begins at 2 o'clock on Tuesday and we know how bold Peter Dutton can be on his feet. Oh, look, Peter will be a very good leader of the opposition. Uh, he's absolutely surgical when it comes to tearing people to pieces on the other side. Uh, but if we look at Mr Albanese's comments today, it was all about you know, procedures and motions and gag motions and what they will and won't do. Mate, no-one's coming to my office to tell me about gag motions and how they're not happy with procedural and proceedings in the parliament. Uh, they're talking about cost of living and how they can't afford to pay their bills and the price of power and reliability across the country. That's what worries them. Yeah, there's been a lot of promises and announcements made, but the real test now is to see if they can get these policies through the Senate. It won't be that easy, will it? Oh, they never will. I mean, you've got the Greens saying they want to ban all new coal, oil and gas projects. Well, I mean, gas alone, I can think of you know, three that would be more than $20 billion yeah. out of the Australian economy that have already taken FID. Uh, and let's be frank and fearless here, we need the oil. <laughs> we desperately need that sovereign capability uh, in a world which is incredibly unstable at the moment, uh, where the oil price is over $100, where gas is in a shortage uh, and in terms of the price absolutely skyrocketing. We've got to make sure we look after our own. And this is interesting. I've heard from the Teals and the Greens during the week in the lead-up to next week saying, well, we have all been given a mandate to, to drive climate change as the top agenda, to ensure that the government does the right thing by having a high emissions target. But since that election, Keith, major things have occurred right around the world and surely the game has changed. Oh, look, that's exactly right. It's getting to the point where it's something out of a Python movie. You know, follow the shoe, follow the gourd. Uh, it's 43%. No, 45%. We want 50%. Well, no-one's actually talking about what matters, and that's how much it will cost and who's going to pay for it mm. and which of the Australian people, uh, in terms of how much money they've got availability, uh, will have to tie into this stuff to get those outcomes. No-one's looking at that. No-one's putting up the detail. It all becomes about a number, which is, to be honest, pretty superfluous. And... The number enshrined in law, Keith, I've made this point on Friday on Chris Kenny's show, the problem with all of that is whoever comes into power in 2030 all of a sudden has their hands tied because you have to reach those targets no matter what, no matter what the circumstances are in terms of war in the Indo-Pacific or war in Eastern Europe or what's happening in terms of being able to keep the lights on. 2030, making this law will be a nightmare for the incoming government. Well, that, that's actually absolutely right. I mean, right now, we're not sure if they can keep the lights on for the next five hours, no matter the next 30 years. I mean, what a problem to be in, in a country like this where we're incredibly resource-rich. Now, uh, you know, they can claim any mandate they like. That's what happens when you get to this place. Everybody's got a mandate. Uh, but the reality is straightforward. Just look at the environmental legislation that was put in a number of years ago, and we just could not get changes through the Senate in our term of government. It made it incredibly difficult and expensive for new projects. Those new projects drive jobs, they drive our economy, they provide opportunities for training and apprentices and really high-paid positions. And what was wrong with that? Well, they couldn't meet the standards. One of the issues that we, I think, didn't focus enough on during the election campaign was the fact that Labor wants to get rid of the Australian Building and Construction Commission. Tony Burke has now confirmed Labor will overhaul the ABCC claiming the watchdog is a politicised agency aimed at reining in the union movement. This is such a bad suck-up to the unions, especially to the likes of the CFMMEU. Well, Mr Burke might want to ring some of those subcontractors, those medium-sized enterprises, who've been broken by the unions because they wouldn't play their games on site. Uh, you know, they, they wouldn't throw over the, over the fence what they were being asked for. 
Uh, and as a result, uh, the unions either blacklisted them or made it so difficult their businesses disappeared. You've only got to look at how many court actions have been taken, how many criminal convictions. That's the reason we put the tough cop on the beat. It's made a difference. And all of these things are paid for by consumers because it drives up the price of apartments and buildings right across the country. It's very true. And you think about the $15 million that have been dished out in fines, all of that lawlessness will not only reoccur, it'll multiply. Oh, absolutely. You look at how many uh, construction companies have gone to the wall in recent times, uh, and this will make it even harder. Yeah. Even harder. Now, I'll... you get some pretty good coin in some of these construction sites. Yeah, very true. I want to get to foot and mouth before we let you go, um, a, a topic close to the Nats. It's made us realise, with the new government in place, that we were so well situated with leaders in the National Party being part of the coalition in government, dealing with the big agricultural crises. And now we've got Murray Watt, uh, the Chief of Staff to Anna Bly, and the lawyer from Brisbane, uh, standing on the border trying to stop foot and mouth coming in. I'm sorry, but I've got no faith in him. Oh, he's a bit like a new penny. He's trying to shine, but uh, ultimately he's not worth that much. Uh, but, you know, you've got to take advice. You've got to be out there. He's new to the role. The Prime Minister should take over the biosecurity response. It would demonstrate internationally and domestically that we're serious about what's happening in this country to keep FMD out. It's what's being called for by farmers. I've seen any number uh, in terms of social media and other broadcasts. They're very, very concerned. We continue to see people coming through airports uh, who have not even been told about the issue. No, they actually had controls put in place. An FMD outbreak would be devastating for this country and it'll be too late down the track to say, oh, we should have done something different. I wonder whether the horse has bolted now, Keith, when you consider that even today there are no acidic foot pads in Sydney Airport. I spoke to one traveller who was asked, where did he come from? Oh, we didn't really get into the, into the rural areas, he said, but there were cows all around me and they just waved me through. That is not a biosecurity measure. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter. You only need some form of product uh, to bring it back into Australia. It's just so contagious. Um, now, you know, the Labor Party are always whatever it takes when it comes to politics. Well, how about whatever it takes when it comes to protecting Australia's agriculture? Very true. Keith Pitt, thank you very much for your time, mate. Enjoy the week. Great to be with you.